How's it going, boys, girls, and squirrels? Today is the day everyone has been excited for, dreading, and secretly wondering if it'll ever actually come at all. Of course, today is the day that Netflix finally released a trailer for their live-action adaptation of Avatar The Last Airbender. Now, despite the fact that this is the first trailer they've dropped for this series, there is already so much lore surrounding it, so strap in. Netflix announced that they'd be making a live-action adaptation of the Nickelodeon show Avatar The Last Airbender all the way back in, I want to say 2018. I want to say 2018, so I will, without any fact-checking or research. Danny, you're making claims with no fact-checking or research? What are you, the news? What are you, one of the non-specific news organizations that I personally don't agree with? But we've known about this thing for years, and from the very get-go, people were split on it. Some people were excited because the show's original creators were on board as showrunners for this series. Others were skeptical, thinking that a live-action Avatar series shouldn't even be attempted again after the disaster that was the M. Night Shyamalan movie. And me, you know, I was, I was over here. I thought as long as the show's original creators were heavily involved, things should be pretty good. The later seasons of The Legend of Korra definitely weren't great by any means, and The Dragon Prince is like, the world's most okay show, but I at least had faith that the show's original creators understood what made The Last Airbender so good and so beloved. But then the show's original creators left the Netflix production, <laughs> and things started to look a little bleak. Oh, but that's alright. They probably just left because they got tied up in other productions or something, right? Oh, they left because they hated the direction Netflix was taking the series in? Whoops! How does that even happen? How do you hire the original creators of one of the most beloved TV shows ever? Ask them to recreate that show in a live-action medium, and not just do everything that they say. So that's terrible. And honestly, when that news broke, I think Netflix should have just scrapped the whole project. I can't think of a single thing more poisonous to this series than the news that the original creators don't like it. The only reason people had any faith in the live-action One Piece adaptation is because the mangaka was heavily involved in the production. But even after all of that happened, I was still kind of against the Shyamalan haters, just on principle. I just hated all of the people who were saying that a live-action adaptation shouldn't be made at all because the Shyamalan movie was bad. The Shyamalan movie was bad because Shyamalan is bad. It has nothing to do with, like, the medium of live-action entertainment. But then Netflix released some set photos from the production, and I began to realize just how much damage the Shyamalan movie really did. I thought that enough time had passed that the wounds that that movie left on me would have been healed, but they lingered, like a red scar across a young boy's face. Because the set photos that Netflix released looked a lot like the Shyamalan movie, which I know isn't fair, because of course they did. They're both adapting the same source material, and visually, you know, outside of everybody's skin color, the Shyamalan movie was pretty faithful to the original show. So of course they share visual similarities, but regardless, that doesn't change the fact that I did a full body, involuntary cringe when I saw those photos. I remember sitting there just being like, oh, is this what this looks like? <laughs> it wasn't looking good for Netflix's live action avatar. But now there's a trailer and Netflix has the chance to prove everybody wrong. I'd love to be proven wrong too. I love the Avatar franchise. You know, if if you couldn't tell. I want to see this franchise succeed in every possible avenue. So, let's see if we could tell whether or not it's going to do that by looking at this trailer. The past. Okay, so that's assumedly like the last episode of the series, right? That's the siege on the North Pole. Again, not looking dissimilar from M. Night Shyamalan, but again, not entirely fair. The future. That all looks pretty good. Here's the thing about the costumes, though. The costumes are tough because I don't think they're costumes that were ever meant to be translated to live action. I think something The Legend of Korra did really well was take the Avatar aesthetic and bring it up to, like, 
actual, realistic, high fashion standards. Everyone was dripped out to the nines in The Legend of Korra, and it was cool seeing them take the old Avatar aesthetic and, like, elevate it to something that was, like, 1920s inspired, but also something that looks like a piece of clothing people would actually wear in their day to day. These costumes really look like costumes, which again isn't the show's fault, but is just a product of adapting like a children's cartoon to live action. I think a way the show could have avoided this is by being like, we're not gonna do an actual like one-to-one -one recreation of Katara and Sokka's outfits. We're gonna do something that's Avatar inspired, but something that like, an Eskimo tribe would actually wear. Actually, now that I've pulled up the Shyamalan images, it looks like that's kind of what he did, and I do dig it. In my defense, I haven't looked at this movie in like so long, which I think no one can blame me for, but like looking at the costumes, I do prefer this to what I've seen so far from the images, the set images, and the trailer. Because this looks like cosplay to me. This looks like it's about to turn into a Skechers ad halfway through, doesn't it? And I'm not like, I'm not just trying to shit on it for the sake of shitting on it. I'm just giving my live, real-time thoughts, and I am interested to hear what you guys think about it as well. Like, do you like that they're going more faithful with the costumes? or not, because this really looks like it's about to turn into a Nike commercial to me. It just, it doesn't look authentic to like the time period or the nation. And I know it's a made up time period and it's a made up nation, but it's like, this looks like a modern day fabric. It doesn't look like this was made from like animal hides and stuff at all. Also the casting, it, <laughs> It's an uphill battle for me because I always love aged up casting. I know I'm in the minority with that, but I can. it's just so hard for me to take kids seriously in an action setting. I never read Ender's Game um, because even though it's allegedly one of the best sci-fi novels ever written, the lead character is six years old. So fuck that. I think the One Piece casting was like, perfect. I think it was phenomenal. Everyone was like a proper age for me to take them seriously while still looking young. It all gets mixed up. Zuko and Iroh look good. I think Zuko is like a proper looking age, which everyone is a proper age. It's just tough that Aang is 12. You can take a 12-year-old in a cartoon a little more seriously when he's fighting a 38-year-old Fire Lord than you can a live-action, actual 12-year-old. Zuko looks good. I heard people don't like the scar. It looks fine. It looks like the scar. Maybe it doesn't cover enough of his head. Like, it, it's a lot... It's really side-heavy. It doesn't go up much. But again, I think you're fighting against, like... Real scars don't look like that. Like, they're trying to stay faithful to what the scar looked like in the show, which is red, and it, that's just making it look like makeup. But I don't think it looks bad. I really don't have, like, any qualms with Zuko from this. I wrote Doobie looking like a big chubby hamster, <laughs> but I think that's maybe unavoidable. His beard is really round, and I feel like it should be, like long and narrow. Again, that's like, you know, who am I to say that this man grew his beard wrong? It's just, <laughs> my initial reaction is this dude looks like a big hamster. There's only one way. Ozai looks great. That beard is 100% glued to his chin, though. That beard is rough. <laughs> it Maybe, I think it's too long. It doesn't look like beard hair. It looks like someone's ponytail that got cut off and, like, glued to his chin. Give him, like, a thin... What does Ozai look like in the show? I guess it's long in the show, too. Like, I guess it's this thick in the show. It's... There's no way this is real. It's just too... I don't know. It looks like a horse's tail. I guess I've just never seen a beard like that out in the wild. Maybe this is just like, like new beard just dropped and it's fucking with my head. You keep it straight. Suki looks phenomenal. 
Suki looks great. I've never seen makeup look that good. End of sentence. That's so impressive. She looks... She looks porcelain. She looks exceptionally good. She's also the only one who doesn't look like they're in cosplay so far. Other than Zuko, Zuko hasn't looked bad. And I like all the Fire Nation armor. Ozai's looked like he's in cosplay. Katara and Sokka look like they're in cosplay. But Suki, like, this looks like a character to me. And maybe it's because I'm not seeing her in outfit. But looks great. So far, this is, like, the most exciting aspect of this trailer. It's straight. Always remember who you are. Again, I don't think there's a single 12-year-old they could have put in this role that I'd be like, yeah. I think I'm just ageist. I think, like, genuinely, I think that's what it is. Let me see. You know what else the Shyamalan movie got right? <laughs> I don't know if anyone's gonna like any of these takes. I liked the tattoo arrow in the original. Like, where it's, or not the original, but the original movie with the, like, where it was really intricate and detailed. This looks weird. And again, it's like, I don't think it's unreasonable for me to be like, it looks weird because it was a cartoon. And I'm not saying the cartoon shouldn't have been adapted. But when you just take the things that were in a cartoon that had no intention of ever being portrayed in live action and just slap it on a 12 year old, like it's gonna look strange. That was good. That was cool. Let's see that. So this is the Agni Kai. This is Ozai and Zuko, assumedly. And it's weird that Zuko's like putting up a fight because I don't, this is familiar to me. And forgive me for not being like the Avatar encyclopedia that I should be considering it's kind of my job. But this, him splitting the fire is reminiscent. I think more of his final Agni Kai though. I don't think he ever really puts up a fight against Ozai. I'm not entirely against it. They could make this scene really good if it's a really desperate, scared fight. And Ozai's just, like, bulldozing him. Like, I'd be so down for an extended Agni Kai sequence that's really brutal, but not in, like, a necessarily violent way. Like, an emotionally brutal Agni Kai. It's also, like, the first instance of bending we see... And I'm almost out of trailer. So that's worrying. Like, show us some bending, right? Okay. We got some more bending. Huh? Also, hi, Azula. That's right, this is Azula. Here's the thing, though, about my ageism. Azula works. Azula is very young. Like, she is, like... 16, 17 coded in the show. Like, in the show, she doesn't look this young. But this, like, works. Like, she... This shot especially, I'm like, this girl looks fucking cruel. It, the, in the show, I'd always aged them up in my head growing up. Like, even when I was 13, Katara and Aang were, like, 15 in my head. Because I was like, I'm 13, and I couldn't take on the Fire Lord... They must be older. And I always idolized, like, high schoolers when I was in middle school and then college kids when I was in high school. And so I was always like, I am so pathetic and small <laughs> that I don't like the idea of, like, someone my age doing the things they're doing. So, like, Katar always read is, like, 15 to me. And here she looks 12 because she is supposed to be. Dude, they're doing it again. Netflix... Huh. It must be Netflix. This is the third time which makes it a pattern. I almost famously now hate the look of Netflix's live action shows, but they're doing it again. Netflix anime have like a look to them or Netflix live action anime. And I hate that they're like seemingly making all of them look so homogenized. I found out what it is in my One Piece live action trailer reaction. I, I hypothesized that what was giving off the, like, live-action anime look is that they're trying to hide the fact that they have shitty lenses. So here's what I'm talking about. If you look at this image, everything looks a little out of focus. Even the people who are in focus look out of focus. And I thought 
they just had bad lenses and were either doing fake shallow focus so they were like in po in editing making the background blurrier than the lens was actually making it or their color grading was bad like something like that i think they're using anamorphic lenses and so anamorphic lenses basically do this it gives you a beautifully blurry background which is a good look but it also like warps the blur so all of these shots one piece does it cowboy bebop does it all the blur vaguely comes in on an iris and that results in even the stuff that's supposed to be in focus not being that sharp and i hate the look the way they're doing it also when zuko does his flaming kick like we'll show it here it looks like a fan film, doesn't it? There's like just nothing about this that looks especially like premiere to me. Like that looks especially like prestigious. That looks good. Ozai doing the fire is good. And this is like, you know, a decent shot. This isn't like a fan filmy looking shot. This is. This just looks like this looks like a, just the woods I could explore in my backyard. You know what I mean? This doesn't look like a gorgeous Asian forest. Like, it's just a gra- This looks like a hiking trail. A modern day gravel hiking trail. But it's- They're doing the weird, like, the lens and the color grading are whack. Like, that looks wacky to me. Maybe I'm just not used to it. It just, it looks injured. It looks like, uh, like a family photo shoot. Like two Avatar fans got married, had kids, and then way too young, they forced their kids into doing like an Avatar cosplay shoot. Like, I don't know. It's like Spy Kidsy. Here's the problem with the trailer. It's not even that it necessarily looks bad, but what concerns me is... The lack of self-awareness coming from Netflix. There is a reason I've been bringing up Shyamalan so much. Because I, like everyone else, would love to forget that that ever happened. But it did happen, and it has, like, plagued the public perception of the possibility of a live-action Avatar for, like, a decade now. And Netflix should know this. They absolutely should. Even the oldest, greediest, most curmudgeonist man working at Netflix should know that background. And knowing that background, this trailer did not show what it needed to show. All this trailer showed us was moving set photos. This showed us there's no reason to be excited for this trailer because the Shyamalan movie happened. It's not enough to be like, look, it's live action Sokka, it's live action Appa. We've seen those, they were bad. This trailer needed to show us dialogue, acting, bending of any kind. There are two and a half instances of bending in this trailer, and that's, and it's all fire. We see no earth bending. We see no water bending. We see some air bending hardly. That's the half. We see two instances of fire bending, but I would argue that's the easiest type to do in CGI. Water is wicked impressive, and earth is impressive just because you have the logistics of like, what happens to the terrain after? That's always been my big thing with earth bending is like, seeing it done well in live action could be really cool because you also have to take into account that they're ripping chunks out of the ground. So maybe like, technically it's not harder than fire. I know fire can be difficult to animate, but like, like critical thinking wise, <laughs> Earth bending is difficult. We see none of it. We see a little air bending. And it's just when Aang, like, drops to the ground, does a big whoosh. We don't see any, like, creative applications of bending. We don't see any good performances from any of the characters. No one talks. We don't hear anyone's voice. We hear who is either, like, the, the guide that helps Aang in the spirit realm, or... Iroh, maybe? Like, someone's narrating. Could honestly even be Roku. I don't know, don't be mad at me for not knowing. If 
anyone at Netflix was self-aware about what this trailer needed to be, they would have made it like a minute-long Agni Kai sequence between Zuko and his father. That would be so smart. Just release that. Release like half of the Agni Kai scene, because here's what that accomplishes. It can show off that the show has good cinematography, good directing, good costume design. If it had any of those, I don't know. It would show off acting. That, I'm sure, is a very tough scene for the Zuko actor to perform, because he has to show true, genuine hurt and fear. It'd be a great way to showcase Ozai just being a menace. If the Agni Kai scene is extended from the original, it would showcase that this is adapting sequences that weren't fully fleshed out in the original show and making them more powerful and impactful this time around. It would showcase a reason for this adaptation to exist by showing us those changes. It would showcase the fight choreography and the bending, none of which we really get here except for a couple of fan film looking shots. I know people will be like, oh, the story is really what matters. Fuck you, it's an action show. The action super matters. We don't even get a look at the tone. Like, I don't know what age group this is for, because honestly, it should be for teenagers. The fan base of Avatar The Last Airbender is my generation. It's a hundred percent, like, senior year of college and up now, because that's who grew up with the show. This should absolutely be like a high PG to a low PG-13 rating. They should absolutely be trying to capture the tone of like the third Harry Potter movie. But we get none of that. It's just a showcase of the cast, which is all Netflix has given us for the past like four years. Compare this to the One Piece trailer, where it does showcase the action, the special effects, the beautifully built sets, the tone in those shots with Buggy, where it's like, oh, this isn't going to be strictly goofy. It's gonna be serious. It's gonna be intense. We get genuinely nothing here, and it's like, so worrying and so insulting, because it just shows that Netflix either doesn't care enough to try, like they don't have the self-awareness to know what this trailer needed to be, or the show doesn't have the material to give us. It's tough. I'm so fascinated though to see what the creators left for, because this, despite looking mid as hell, isn't enough for me to be like, that's why they left. A lot of people theorize that Netflix wanted to age up the cast so that they can like fuck and that it could be like Riverdale, the last airbender. That's clearly not the case. Aang is 12, Katara is 13. They're all age appropriate. They're all race appropriate. It must be something else. Like if they cut to Aang and he was a 38 year old dude, then I'd be like, oh yeah, that's why they left. I get it now. They missed the point. This just looks like it looks like Avatar. It's not like Cowboy Bebop where they miss the tone, but I, but they also don't give us the tone. So I don't know. What are they hiding? That's what I'm most curious about. I'm excited to see why they left and if we can pinpoint it ourselves. But that's my pretentious spiel. Um, I'm sorry I was so negative. I don't know what the public perception of this is. Does the dislike thing still work? People like it enough. It has like no views though, which is crazy. Already better than the movie we don't remember. The effects look good. Time will tell if the acting, the story, blah, blah, blah. This actually gave me chills. Are they going to nail an Atla live action finally? Like, what gave you chills? Maybe it's just enough for some people to just be like, oh, Azula's in it, you know? I, like, these costumes don't look bad. These look pretty good. I don't mind these. I don't mean to be overly negative. That's not what I want. Like I said, I'd, I'd kill for this to be really good. What's to be excited about? It's just the Shyamalan one. There's nothing shown here that wasn't shown in the Shyamalan one, you know? Like, there's no action sequence that's like, oh, they get it, they get bending. There's no, like, speech that's like, man, that's Iroh to a T. It, like, this image looks like it belongs in a photo frame as, like, the temp photo they put in when you buy the frame. Well, 
Anyway, I'm very excited to see what your guys' thought on this trailer is. I really... I'm interested. Because here it looks like cosplay again. These costumes, and maybe it's a vibrancy, but I really think it's the material. But anyway, as always, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'm excited to hear them, and I will see you guys next time. Hold on to me, baby. Won't you come a little closer? Will I live for now? I won't